How do scientists decide which type of investigation to use? In this video, we'll explore how to select the best investigative approach to answer scientific questions. If you watched my previous video, you'll remember that we covered five different types of investigations and when to use each one. Now, let's put that knowledge into action. Let us explore a simple example of selecting an investigative approach. Imagine your class is learning about food and nutrients. And your teacher gives you a challenge. Investigate the major types of nutrients present in a food item, let us say, a cheeseburger. To carry out this investigation, your lab technician provides the following equipment and reagents, a cheeseburger, a mortar and pestle, deionized water, glassware like beakers and test tubes, a water bath, and reagents such as iodine solution, Benedict's reagent, Biorette reagent, and ethanol. First, you divide the cheeseburger into four equal parts and grind them into a paste using the mortar and pestle. To make the food paste more workable, you mix it with distilled water. Creating a homogeneous suspension, you then distribute this mixture into four separate test tubes. Now, let us analyze what is inside our cheeseburger. In test tube 1, you add a few drops of iodine solution and stir. If starch is present, the solution turns blue-black. In test tube 2, you add Benedict solution, the same volume as the food sample, and place the test tube in a water bath at 80 degrees Celsius. A brick-red precipitate indicates the presence of simple sugars like glucose. In test tube 3, you add birette solution, a mix of copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide. If proteins are present, the solution turns purple. In test tube 4, you add ethanol and shake the tube vigorously. If lipids are present, a cloudy white emulsion forms. At the end of the experiment, you record the color changes in each test tube helping you determine which macronutrients are present in the cheeseburger. So, what type of investigation is this? This investigation is best described as exploring and observing, because we are not grouping different foods into types or categories. Instead, we're focusing on a single food item, a cheeseburger, and analyzing it to identify the types of nutrients it contains by using chemical reagents. We're observing the presence or absence of specific nutrients like carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids within this one sample. We're not comparing different foods or changing variables to see effects. We are simply exploring what is there and observing how it reacts. This makes it more about discovery within a single context than drawing patterns or testing variables when selecting an investigative approach. It's important to match the method to the nature of the research question. In this case, identifying the types of nutrients in a food item requires an exploring and observing investigation rather than pattern-seeking or fair testing. A pattern-seeking investigation looks for relationships or trends between two or more variables without directly manipulating them. It helps answer questions like, do people who eat more protein-rich foods have stronger muscles? Or is there a correlation between sugar intake and energy levels? These questions require large-scale observations and data collection across multiple instances. However, our investigation is about identifying specific nutrients in a single food sample, not looking for patterns across different foods. Since nutrient content is already a known characteristic of the food item, there is no need to look for trends just direct observations. A fair test investigates the effect of one independent variable, while keeping all other conditions constant. This approach is used for questions like, does heating food destroy its vitamin C content? Or how does the fat content of different foods affect their energy release? In a fair test, we change one variable, for example, temperature, type of food, or preparation method, while keeping everything else the same, to observe its effect, however. Our investigation is not about comparing conditions, but simply detecting. 
what is already present in the food. The chemical tests we use, iodine, Benedix, Bioret, and ethanol, are qualitative. They reveal the presence or absence of nutrients, not how they change under different conditions. So, we can conclude that pattern seeking is not the right choice of investigation to answer our question, because we are not looking for trends or relationships across multiple samples. Fair testing is not suitable because we are not testing the effect of a variable on nutrient content. Exploring and observing is the right choice because we are using a systematic approach to explore what is in the food by observing the outcome of four different qualitative tests by using appropriate reagents. For students who are watching this, you need to analyze your experimental choice like this after you carry out an investigation. A big thank you to all those who have already subscribed to my channel. See you soon.